God said he would make it all right, then it is already all right. But you have to use your faith in order to experience the all right. We thank you uh, for coming out today, and we have another inspiring and encouraging word for you. Our objective each and every time we speak is to encourage and inspire you, to remind you of who you are, to remind you of who you serve, and to remind you of the reason that you're here. Because if you're still breathing, you're alive today, that means that you're not finished. God is not finished with you. There is work for you to do. I want to talk to you today from, a, from the thought, you are special. You are special. You know, Lizzo, the artist, has a song out that many of you may have heard on the radio. Special is the title of the song. In the song, she talks about how she feels lonely a lot. But if no one has told you today, she says, you're special. So I want to remind you that you are special. I want to take this, uh, lift up a scripture here coming from 1 Peter. And we'll look at a few scriptures today. I was kind of not knowing, uh, I was kind of concerned, or I won't say uh, concerned, it's just the Word of God is so good, sometimes you don't know if you want to start here, go there, or start here, and go back there. So the best thing to do is just get up here and say, Lord, have your way. All right? So we, we want to talk to you from the thought from First Peter, and we're going to be looking at, uh, let's see. Verse 22, starting at 22, and I'll end at 25. Now, look at what he says here. This is Peter writing to those Jews who had been dispersed out of Israel and scattered across uh, the area. Okay. He says, since you have purified your souls. Now, he's talking to believers. Since you have purified your souls in obeying the truth. So if we were to ask the question, how do you purify your soul, your mind, your will, and emotion? By obeying the truth through the Spirit in sincere love of the brethren. The Word of God says, sincere <laughs> love of the brethren. Love one another fervently, he says. Love one another fervently. And fervently here means to stretch. See, to stretch to the limits. See, to stretch to the limit. Love one another fervently with a pure heart. See, a pure mind, your thoughts are pure in reference to loving this individual. 23, having been born again, and this is very important, having been born again, you having been born again, not of corruptible seed, not of corruptible seed, but incorruptible through the word of God, which lives and abides, how long? Forever, all right? Because, he says, all flesh is as grass, and all the glory of man, no matter what you achieve, as the flower of the grass. The Word of God says the grass withers, and its flower falls away. 25, he says, but the word of the Lord endures forever. Amen? If you look back at 23, he says, been born again, not of corruptible seed. I want you to pay attention to that word seed, but incorruptible. Still talking about seed through the word of of God, which lives and abides forever. See, you're special because there is a seed in you. As a believer, there is a seed of the divine nature that has been deposited, planted, just like you will plant a seed in soil, in dirt, there is a seed that has been planted in you that is incorruptible. That seed is incorruptible. 
That seed is in Christ. And that seed is the Word, the Spirit of God, that brings, that gives life. That gives life. That brings about life. The spiritual life. See, implanted by the Holy Spirit to produce the new birth. It is unfailing in you and it is permanent. You can't lose it. See, you can't lose, you can't lose, and this speaks volumes too, you can't lose your salvation. Now, so he says the word that abides forever, all right? He says the word that abides forever. So go with me to John, the gospel of John, John chapter 1, because he's talking about the word that abides forever. This incorruptible seed is the word. So in the gospel of John, let's find out, or let's take a look, who is this Word? See, who is this Word? He says, in the beginning, starting at verse 1, was the what? Word. All right? And the Word was where? With God. And the Word was who? God. He was in the beginning, what? With God. God. Now look at what he says here in three. All things, look around, no matter what you see, no matter what you see when you go out these doors, no matter what you see as you go through your weak day, all things were made through him. See, and without him, nothing was made that was made. Look at verse 4 here. He says, in him. Now, we're talking about this word that is in you that abides forever. This is what makes you special. I don't care what anyone says. You have the enduring word in you. I don't care how you feel. The fact is, the truth is, let's just say, the truth is, you are special. All things are made through him, and without him, nothing was made that was made. In him, in him was what? Life. And the life was the light of men. And this light here has to do with knowledge, not a shining light. See, it has to do with knowledge. So since you have this incorruptible seed in you, now be mindful of this. God created you and me from where? The dust of the ground. All right? So he created us from the dust of the ground, from the dirt. And the word dirt in the Hebrew, or the word dirt means humus, all right? So God created man in his image, spirit, and in his likeness, the ability to function like him, all right? You follow me? Because this is good stuff. Once you find out, let me tell you, when you grasp a hold of who you really are, man, there's nothing that can stop you but you. But you, you're the only thing that can stop you. So God created you in his image according to his likeness if we looked at Genesis uh, chapter 1, all right? He created you in his image, spirit, in his likeness. See, the ability to function like him. Then he formed you, see, in Genesis chapter 2, verse 7, from the dust of the ground. So God took dirt and he took this, 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 this spirit, you, and he placed you in this dirt. Now remember, when he created you, he created you. He pulled you out of himself, spirit. See, he took the divine nature. He took this and he planted it in dirt, humus, dark earth. He planted you in that. That's why we call you human. See, it's a combination of the word humus and man. So human, that's who you are. That's who God created you to be. A human being with the ability to function like him. Since he took himself, the divine nature, planted in this dirt. Think about this from an agricultural perspective. When you take a seed 
and you plant that seed. Whatever you plant is going to come up. Now that seed, you can't see the apple tree. See, you see the seed. You can't see the fruit. You see the seed. But when you plant that seed in dirt, fertilize it a little bit, water it, take care of it. Up comes the apple tree, up comes the fruit. That fruit has more seeds in it. Think about yourself. He took you, planted you in this earth, this dirt body, placed you here on this earth. What are you supposed to bear? What kind of fruit are you supposed to bear? Look at uh, Galatians chapter 5 for a second. Let me take you to Galatians chapter 5 for a second. Galatians chapter 5. <laughs> when you think about this, man, I'm telling you, when you think about this, see, when God, it's, it's the potential principle is a seed. Everything in life, everything has a seed. Everything has a seed and has the ability to reproduce after its own kind. That's when a male and a female come together, we have another you. See, because a male has a seed. He deposits that seed. You see, that seed in that woman, that woman is human, humus, man, dark earth, dirt. Look what comes from that. When you look at this, see, God set this thing up so it, it would really be simple for us to really grasp. And he gave us examples because every time you are eating an orange, every time you're eating an apple, any time you're eating something with seed in it, man, you ought to think about you. See, because in that seed is more of what you're eating. See, in the male is a whole bunch of more just like him. Whole bunch of more just like him. And we, being here on this earth, are supposed to bring forth something. And what type of fruit should you and I be producing? He says in verse 22, but the fruit of the Spirit, the fruit of the Spirit, did he not create you, Spirit? See, he deposited you uh, in this dark earth, this dust of the ground. He formed you. All right. So now something should be coming up. Look what should be coming out of you. All right. He says, but the fruit of the Spirit is what? Love. Is love coming out of you? You're special. This is the type of fruit you're supposed to be producing. Look at what he says, joy. Joy. <laughs> it's joy coming out of you in those darkest moments, those darkest times. And see, this type of joy that he's talking about has nothing to do with what's happening externally. This is all about the joy, the peace that you have from the wrath of God being settled because you have come into the body of Christ. Lord, have mercy. Look, look at this other fruit here. Peace, long-suffering, kindness, goodness. Look at that. Faithfulness, gentleness. Look at here. Self-control. Self-control. When you have self-control, see, which basically we talk about self-discipline. You don't need any other type of discipline when you have self-discipline. This is the fruit that the Spirit bears. Now, since the Spirit is supposed to bear this fruit, when God planted, see, you, everything you need is in you. Already. You ain't got to go out and get nothing. If he says love, he's put enough love in you. If he says peace, he's put enough peace in you for any occasion. Long-suffering, he's given you the ability, see, to be patient, to function appropriately, to wait on the Lord. This is already in you. You are special. You're God's own special individual, uniquely designed placed here for a particular reason. Yes, you are. He says, against such, there is no 
law. Lord, have mercy, Jesus. I, I, let me tell y'all something. If you just took the time. See, a, a lot of times when you feel like this, you know the truth. And you get around people who don't know the truth. They want to call you conceited or call you some names or say certain things about you. All that is evidence and an opportunity for you to share with them, see, who you are and introduce to them who they can be. It's no uh, uh, opportunity for you to go back and forth with them or to say, oh, were they talking about me? Well, they're supposed to be talking about you. You the light of life. You everything. You see, I'd be concerned if they're not talking about me because that would say something. I'm not doing anything. See, my light must shine. Your light must shine. You, see, have the incorruptible seed of the divine nature of God in you right this very moment. Right this very moment, you got it. You're special. What are you doing with it? Because it's yours. Can't nobody take it from you. He planted it. See, and what God plants, no man, nobody can remove. He knew you before the foundation of the world. He knew you when you were in your mother's womb. He expected you. God expected you. And since he expected you, he prepared a way for you. It may look tough sometimes. Go get it. It may seem hard sometimes. Go get it. It may seem like you're not going to make it. Keep moving. It may seem like the whole world is against you, but the only thing you have to be cognizant of and truly believe is that the Lord is with me. If everybody else is against me, they on the wrong side. They playing for the wrong team. Do you know? You know, sometimes you just get so ecstatic about when you truly know who you are. And I want you all to really grasp who you truly are so you can live like God expects you to live. He's not surprised if you mess up. He's already, his plan, God's plan, has already factored in every wrong turn I took, every bad decision I made, every time I was stopped by the police, when I was taken down. God planned, already, he already knew that because he knew Tony. See, he knows me. Right now, he knows the next time I'm going to mess up, but he also knows I'm going to say, Lord, forgive me. You know, forgive me, Lord. See, when you know that you have the incorruptible seed in you. See, an incorruptible seed, there is nothing that you and I can do to mess this thing up. So that's hard to believe. See, because we've been indoctrinated to the way the world thinks. You must remember, you're not from here, Earth. You're not from the third planet from the sun. You're from God. He placed you here to expand his heavenly territory. He wanted more territory. He says, I'm, uh, 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 I'm not going to go there and rule. I'm going to give that to my children. That's why the word of God in Psalms tells us the, uh, the earth. See, the heavens of the heavens belong to God. But the earth he has given to who? The sons of man. This is your place. At what point are we going to wake up and start ruling what God has given us? See, that's why he calls us kings here. See, this is our place. Satan has no real, true power. We fight, see, from a position of victory. You do. You already won. 
You just have to go through the winning process. Now, some of us, hey, you know what I'm saying? That we find that very difficult to do. And that has a lot to do with us not exercising the faith that you have, because he's given to everyone a measure of faith. And that faith, to enough faith to accept, see, the reality that Jesus Christ went to the cross, died, rose again, that you and I might have life. And not just have it, but we should have it more abundantly, brothers and sisters. Yeah, I got problems just like y'all got. You understand what I'm saying? But one thing that's not going to happen, my problems are not going to have me. I'm going to dominate them because he's given me the ability. He gave me dominion over everything that he created in Genesis. And so since he gave me dominion over a domain, then that first place that I'm supposed to rule is Tony. Can you rule you? If you find it difficult, remember, you have a seed in you that's incorruptible. You have the spirit of the living God. The divine nature is in you. God thought so much of you and I, ladies and gentlemen, that he says, I'm going to take up residence in them. How much more special can you be when the creator of the entire world says, I want to live in you? Man, if somebody don't want to be with you, I could care less. I got Jesus. And grandma used to say, he's what? Enough. Y'all with me? You got, as you go through this week, don't let anything cause you to fall. You're going to stumble. See, because you're going to get angry. You're going to get upset. You're going to sin. But God already knew you were going to do that. Now, you don't go out and do it on purpose, you see. But when you do, ask him to forgive you and keep running. We don't have time to stop. We don't have time to rest, to lean on something, hold up, man, wait a minute, uh-uh. We got to keep going because he's given us everything we need that pertains to life and godliness. You have it right now. You are special. Yes, you are. I know who you are because I know who created you. There's no doubt in my mind who you are. There's no doubt in my mind what you can do if you get up and do it. Just think about that for a second. All the things that run across your mind. There's a seed in you with everything that you need. Water that seed with the word of God. Fertilize that seed with the word of God. Feed the spirit what the spirit eats, scripture. You don't eat hot dogs, hamburgers, you know what I'm saying, collard greens. All that stuff is good for the human body. But the spirit needs scripture. Yeah, grandma's cornbread and all that stuff is good. But that don't do nothing for your spirit. It needs scripture. And some of uh, our spirits are starving right now. So start eating properly today. Start eating properly today so your seed will grow. So that the fruits of the spirit will begin to manifest themselves. And trees don't bear fruit. Trees don't eat their own fruit. The fruit that you bear is for others. How does your fruit taste? You're special, ladies and gentlemen. Hold on to God's unchanging hand as you go through this week. And remember, God loves you. Remember, he is depending on you. And he depends on you because he puts something in you that's greater than you. So he's in us. And the very moment we decide to move out the way and allow him to manifest himself through us, 
man, life begins to take on a whole new meaning. Amen? Amen. Do you believe the word of God? Yeah. I put it to work in your life this week and watch God burst you wide open. God bless you this morning. May heaven continue to smile upon you. If there is anyone who has made a decision or is already troubling your mind that you haven't come in yet, but you know you need to come in. It's been tugging on your shirt. It's been pulling you. You open the refrigerator. He right there looking at you, letting you know, come on in. It's your day. If there are any who have fallen back, you know what I'm saying? You know that it ain't like it's supposed to be. You get it right today. He's waiting for you. And if you decide that, well, you know, I'm, I just, I'm just not sure. Well, as you're driving home, you're walking around the house, take the time. Say, Lord, forgive me of my sins. I accept your son, Jesus Christ, as my Lord and Savior. Come into my life. Show me why I'm here. Why did you create me? What am I supposed to be doing? I just want to serve you, God. My life is yours, and I promise you that that incorruptible seed will be planted in you. The Holy Spirit will come the very moment, the very moment you share with God that the door to your house is open. He's coming in. He's truly going to come in. Yes, yeah, going to spend a lot of time forever with 